Hey guys, welcome back. This is my third video in a 10 part series on how to show people with anxiety and depression and other such mental health conditions get to sleep fast. Today I'll be going through how to create that right environment to help you kick back, lie down and get that rest that you deserve. Greetings, my name is Nigel Mayo and welcome to my channel, Salad Cream Boy. Not as seedy as it sounds. If you're finding me for the first time, this channel is devoted to one thing, one thing only, helping those with mental conditions such as anxiety, depression and anything else like that, help them improve their mental state. So last week I've shown you how aromatherapy might be helpful in helping you get to sleep fast. Today I'll be going a step further than that though. Today I'm going to be going through what changes you can make to your environment that might be essential to you getting a good night's sleep. So I'd just like to ask that if you're getting any value from this content that I'd like you to consider liking it, subscribing for any further content that might help you improve your mental state. Also I'd just like you to leave a comment below to tell me how long did it take you to get to sleep last night? And also, as always, leave the hashtag mental health matters. Okay, so no matter what kind of situation you're in, whether you're in a tiny bed sit, whether you're in a big mansion or any kind of house that you're in right now, I can give you a few tips on how to make a few nice little tweaks to help you make that environment a bit more relaxing for you. So have you ever wondered why you might feel a bit more awake during the summer than you do during the winter? What's happening is, is that you're getting more sun exposure which helps your body produce vitamin D and it promotes better health. So when it comes to the winter, obviously we get shorter days so you're not getting that sun exposure. And when that happens, the body is thinking, and more importantly the brain, it's thinking, hang on a minute, sun's gone down, it's time to go to sleep. So when it does get dark, the body starts releasing something called metatoin, and this is something that's released by the pineal gland. I really hope I got that pronunciation right. And this is the thing that controls your sleep patterns. The pituitary gland, and again, I hope I got that pronunciation okay. Releases a growth hormone, so during the night it helps your body grow and repair itself. So what I do, when you're in a bedroom, close those curtains, or better yet, avoid that bedroom like a plague. So again, you're associating the bedroom with going to sleep, because it's always going to be dark in there. And also, in turn, that way it's going to be easier for your body and your brain to associate your living space, kitchen, bathroom, whatever, for the stuff that it needs to be. And you're away from the bedroom and theoretically, when you're in other rooms, you won't feel as tired. Because your brain is being trained to think, okay, I'm in these rooms now, it's nice and bright, I can get on with stuff. One thing I would like to suggest is purchasing some blackout curtains. Now, they're reasonably inexpensive and you can get them from pretty much anywhere these days. I actually got mine from Amazon and what I'll do, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can take a look for yourself. But what I'd also like to do right now, I just want to play a clip for you because these are my blackout curtains and honestly, they do the job so well. I actually haven't blocked out at the very top of the curtains, so it's kind of negated. But once you're actually able to secure those curtains, my God, do, does it make a difference? So here we go. So this is how my blackout curtains look. Now, as you can see at the top, I haven't got completely uh, sorted out there. Uh, you can fix this by using Velcro stickers, um, and that would seal it to the top of the to the top of the wall but i just wanted to show you i'm getting right up and it's absolute pitch black and if i open that's what the scene is outside nice and bright okay yeah so yeah i would really really uh, suggest getting some of these see great aren't they the thing is as well, on the flip side, when you actually wake up in the morning, either you can just get up, bolt out and get out, or open those curtains as soon as you possibly can and then get 
up. So what you'll be doing then within your brain, you'll be trying to associate opening those curtains, getting natural light and actually getting up and going. Okay, so now that you're only using your bedroom for sleep and you're cutting out all that excess light from outside, it's time to make sure that there's no distractions within the room itself or when you want to climb into bed. So what I want you to do, anything that doesn't necessarily need to be turned on or there in the bedroom, turn it off and take it into the next room. Or alternatively, if you're in a bed sit where it's just one space, where honestly, I've just come from a situation like that, Still, turn those devices off, put them around the corner, put them on the opposite side of the room so that you don't want to get up and actually use them. Also, if you do have to have, say, a mobile phone on for emergencies or if you want to put some nice, quiet, relaxing music on, just make sure that any LED lights, especially ones that go on while charging, just make sure that they're either covered or obstructed from view. That way you don't have anything physically attacking your eyes to help you get to sleep better. So in the summer this might not be something that's going to be very easy to do. So what I might suggest is just invest in say a really small portable uh, air cooler. You can get them for like £20 loads on Amazon. Again I'll put a link in the description to the one that I have because it's so good. All you do, get into the freezer, get some ice cubes, uh, fill the thing in the... Um, Fill it up with water and put some ice cubes in it and it keeps it nice and cool for ages. But during the winter what I'd suggest is just opening that window for say, I don't know, an hour, half an hour, hour before bed. That way you just want to create a nice, cool, fresh environment to go to sleep to. So not only does switching all the lights and everything off in a room help, but also when you cool the room down, it cools down the body and that also increases the production of metatorin. This is the sleep hormone. The production of this hormone is a lot higher when it's a lot cooler. And not only does this help get you to sleep, it helps keep you asleep and it promotes all those good things like REM, rapid eye movements, and it just helps keep you in a better position of deep sleep. The other thing that you can do to help with this is take a nice hot steaming shower or bath, say about an hour or two before bed. You don't want to do it too closely because you know you don't want to be dealing with hypothermia before you actually go to bed. But Salad Cream Boy, you endless source of wisdom and charisma, I hear you say. I thought we were trying to keep cool, not hot. Why yes, imaginary person that I'm using as a prop to prove my point. You'd be correct. You see, it's not the act of the bath or the shower itself. It's not the fact that you're raising your temperature. It's the fact that once you exit the bath or come out the shower, your body temperature plummets. And that's what we want. We want to get those conditions before you get to bed so that you're able to get to sleep faster. Again, just be careful with this. You don't necessarily want to take a bath. Take all your towels, clothes or whatever off and just lie there and then you just wake up with a nasty chest infection, cold or whatever else. And if you're really, really unsure about that, just consult your local pharmacy. They'd be more than happy to help. Oh, and I just thought I'd make one little honourable mention here. Alcohol. The more you have it and the less actual water that you're drinking at the end of the night, the more difficult it's going to be for your body to regulate your body temperature and it's going to be a lot difficult to cool down at the end of the night. So you might think, okay, I'm a bit stressed out and so just going to have a couple of cold ones, go to bed and think, oh, I can't cool down. You just have some nice, clear water and drink lots of it during the day, all that good stuff then it'll be a lot easier for your body to cool down at night because your body is filled up more with water than anything else. So the last thing would be, say, aromatherapy and certain sounds. 
Now I'm not really going to go through this now because I've already covered it in my last video. Again, I'll put a link in the description below, but I just wanted to make it an honorable mention again. Now, the thing that you'll be doing by using aromatherapy and the techniques that I explained in the last video is that if you use this in conjunction with everything that I've mentioned here, you'll be creating a powerhouse of relaxation. And yeah, that's an oxymoron, I think. But yeah, my point being is that you're going to have loads and loads of different methods and you're going to kick butt in going to sleep now. In fact, when you wake up, you should be as tranquil as Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid movies. The only thing I would like to mention in conjunction with the aromatherapy, if you wanted to play some nice, relaxing, I don't know, um, bath time melodies that I've actually found on YouTube. I might, yeah, what I'll do, I'll put a link in the description again for that to show you um, just a few nice relaxing zen melodies um, just to keep going through the night if you need that sound. But again, as earlier, if you are going to be doing that, I would suggest that making sure that while the music's on, all the lights and everything are covered. So there we have it, that's my part 3 video done. So again, if you've got any value from this content, I'd like you to like the video, subscribe for any future content. Honestly, I'm not even kidding, it really does help all of your favourite content creators on YouTube roll their channels. It really does mean the world to all of us. Because, well, as I always like to say, at the end of the day, it gets dark.